Nevada State Representative Michelle Fior, famously the person who said that cancer is a fungus that you can just wash out with salt water. Yeah, that Michelle Fior. She believes that racism is over. Let's, uh, let's let her explain why. Several things come to mind as I listen to my colleagues uh, regarding this bill. And uh, we're in 2015. And with um, my peers that are concerned with color, um, I think as we pick people up and drive them to the polls to vote, as you said, Assemblyman Stewart, we can pick people up if they don't have an ID as well. And in today's society, because I didn't experience what you and Mr. Mumford did, but I can tell you the great respect I have for my peer, Mr. Munford, being the first colored man to graduate his college. We're in 2015 and we have a, a black president, in case anyone didn't notice. So the color and the race issue, um, I think it's time that we put that to rest. We have a black president? Really? No, I didn't notice. What are you talking about, Michelle? Really? It's, that, it's, that, it's always that half-hearted joke that you know, a lot of us tend to make here on the liberal side about conservatives saying, oh, you know, we're not racist and we have a black president. We're over racism. Now here's Michelle Fior actually saying that and believing it. That's amazing. We have a black president, so therefore racism's over and we just got to get past it. Man, we got to get past the race card despite the fact that we have uh, racist policing, okay, in this country. We just had a DOJ report that showed how the an entire city, down to the court or from the courts down to the police, were targeting African Americans with fines and fees, and using them as a bank, a piggy bank, for the city, and keeping them down. We have racist stories all over, people selling selling run N word run signs were people targets for people to shoot and she says well racism's over and and the other thing what she was addressing is voter id laws remember the voting rights act and a very important section was struck down that part of the voting rights act prevented states from putting in things that would uh, laws against voting that would impact African Americans it would also impact students and the elderly as well with voting ID laws. And the funny thing about voting ID laws is that what the kind what kinds of ID they require, they accept a state ID, sure. They don't accept school ID, but they accept your gun ID and that you have to go and get to uh, the place to get the ID, sometimes pay for it. And, of course, you can see how that would impact people of color who are disproportionately poor as well as elderly uh, seniors and students. People who generally vote Democratic. If you're poor, most likely you vote Democrat, although we do see a lot of uh, Republicans who are very poor voting against their own economic interests. And I think that ties back into racism. But no. Michelle Fiore says, racism's over, stop playing the race card. This isn't racist at all, no. She even says later on in the video, oh, if there's anybody who can't get an ID, I'll drive them myself. That doesn't solve the problem. That doesn't actually solve the problem or mitigate the impact. You admit that there is an impact of these voter ID laws. So much so that you offer driving them to get a voter ID, which we don't know if you actually were ever really serious about. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure, I'll drive them to the polls. Yeah, yeah, I'll drive them to get an ID, all right? Yeah, right. Like, this is a major problem. Voting rights in this country are being restricted in many different states. And the one thing that protected some of these uh, people that would be affected by voter ID laws has been stripped out by the Supreme Court. Voting rights is a major issue in America. Voting is a major issue in America. 
with little turn with as little turnout as we have, we should be focusing our efforts to increasing that turnout to making it easier to vote instead of harder. But here we are, intentionally making harder. This is intentional. This isn't by accident. This isn't this is on purpose. Paul Ryrick, my favorite guy to go back to, father of the modern conservative movement, warned us of the Gugu syndrome and said that the more people that are voting, the less chance of power uh, the less chance that we have of staying in power as conservatives. Conservatives don't want people to vote. This isn't about protecting integrity. This is about keeping people from voting because they'll vote against you or, or your party. Your party has nothing to offer anyone unless you are super wealthy. So they keep people from voting. Or they convince them to vote against their own economic interests because of whether or not they're using religion, whether or not they're using um, uh, promising them that they're going to be millionaires or blaming poor people or African Americans from st for stealing their jobs, uh, illegal immigrants, etc., etc. There's always some way to try to get people who can vote to vote against their own interests and to vote for them. It's it's really amazing. And to keep people who would vote for their own economic interests as well as the interests of the rest of America. They just find it easier instead of appealing to those people and actually offering them something and offering them progress and saying, we want to help the country with our policies. They say it's just easier to shut down the vote. It's just easier to enact restrictive voting laws and to stop democracy. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Republicans are unpatriotic. They don't believe in America they believed in America, then they would want every citizen to be involved in the process instead of citizens that only will keep them in power. They're undemocratic and un-American, the Republican Party. 